Hello everybody, today we're talking about angles and the unit circle. Now, we're going to talk about some angles in specific positions. So, an angle in the, unit, in the coordinate plane is in standard position. We're going to call this standard position when its vertex is at the origin and one ray is on the positive x-axis. Okay? The ray on the positive axis we will refer to as the initial side of the angle and the other ray we will call the terminal side so it's very important that you understand these three terms so standard position of the of the angle um, we need to understand what ray means that's just the side of the angle and the origin and its vertex well that's the point origin is the middle of the graph so let's talk about kinda of what that definition means so let's say we have a angle that's in standard position. So it says that a ray or the, an angle is in standard position if its vertex is at the origin. So the origin is right there in the middle of the graph and one ray is one side of the angle must be on the positive x axis which is right there and we know that to make an angle we have to have another side. So let's make it anywhere. So if coming from the vertex there's our angle. So that's the angle right there. Remember that first side, that is the initial side. And the other side is what we call the terminal side. Now, another thing that you want to notice when we're looking at these angles is today in this lesson and from now on, we're going to talk about if it's a positive or a negative angle. Now, if we look at this angle, it's going from the positive x-axis to its terminal side and it's going in a counterclockwise motion which means going from going this way the opposite way of a clock so if we were to have another angle start again in standard position where its initial side is on the positive x-axis and it went this way and we wanted to measure the angle right here well we would go in a in a clockwise fashion so that would be a negative so if we go in a clockwise fashion it's a negative angle and if we go in a counterclockwise it's a positive angle okay alright so for our first problem we're just gonna try to find the measure of the angle so let's find the measure of the angle from the initial side to the terminal side right there so that's a counterclockwise so again if you think about it it's a positive angle now we have a few things that we can look at and notice that we are given a coordinate so we know that this point right here is the point two two and this terminal side goes through that point so that can help us out now from here to here from the x-axis to the y-axis we should know that that's going to be a ninety degree angle so this is going to be greater than 90 degrees and we can look at it. Now you may be able to look at it and say oh that from here from the y-axis to this is going to be 45 so it's 135 degree angles which you would be correct but if you have a different side or a different point that is not 2 2 this is how you'd find it out. So let's create a right triangle from the origin to this point. So let's zoom in here a little bit <clears throat> and so if we go over and I'm going to make this let's do this in blue so here's a side from the origin to the left two and up two so we have two two now this forms a right triangle and we could figure this angle out right here using Sokatoa Remember the SOKATO, the trig functions? So H, C A H, and T O A. So that is, stands for sine is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. And this is cosine is equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse. And then TOA, tangent is equal to the opposite over adjacent. So hopefully you guys remember that. So now if we're trying to find that angle 
So we are given two sides. We know that this, oops, we know that, um, wrong tool, there we go. We know that this side is 2 and this side is 2 as well. This is from this angle, the opposite side, and this side is going to be the adjacent side. So which one of these trig functions do you think we'd use? We have opposite and adjacent, OA, TOA. So we'd use the tangent. So we'd take tangent theta, and theta is the variable for the measure of that angle. So we say theta is equal to the opposite, which is 2, over the adjacent. And now, to solve for this theta, we use an inverse tangent function. So we do the inverse tangent. And we know that 2 over 2 is 1. And we have this inverse tangent on our calculators. So if you'll do this with me, locate the inverse tangent function, which you'll have to do, you'll have to hit the second button, and it's just above the tangent function. So you're going to hit second tangent, and you know that 2 over 2 is 1, so we're going to do tangent of 1, or inverse tangent of 1. And if you hit enter, you'll notice that this theta should equal 45. And so that's a 45 degrees. Now, that's not everything. That is the angle from here to here. We want from here to here. Well, we know this whole angle from the positive y-axis to the negative x-axis from here to here is 90. So if we take 90 minus the theta, which is 45, we can say 90 minus 45, and we would get 45 degrees. So that is going to give us the measure of this angle from here to here. So that's 45 and we already know that that's 90 and if we add those together we know that the measure of that angle is 135 degrees so 135 degrees is the answer alright so here's the next problem that I'm going to try to do let's try to find the measure of this angle and we want to go instead of counterclockwise we're going to go clockwise so we're going to try to find the measure of the angle from here to here okay so now the way that I would do that again is we know that it's 90 degree angle from the x-axis to the y-axis so from here to here is 90 so it's going to be greater than 90 again uh, but now we need to find the measure of the angle from here to here now again the way that I would do that is making that right triangle again so let's go ahead and do that and I'm going to go ahead and put that as a blue triangle again so from here to here and here to here and now I'm going to show the side so this is a negative 3 and this is a negative 2 so again if we're trying to find the measure of this angle what two sides do we have well we have the opposite which is this negative 2 and the adjacent side of that triangle. So now again opposite and adjacent we're going to use tangent. So to find tangent theta we can put the opposite negative 2 over the adjacent negative 3. Now again to solve for theta we have to use the inverse tangent so if I do that I can take the inverse tangent of both sides and I would have now negative over negative is positive, so I'm just going to put two-thirds there. So the inverse tangent of two-thirds, and if I put that into the calculator again, I should get a number of 33.69, which I'm just going to round to 33.7. And I would like for you guys to all do that in your calculator just to make sure that you can get that answer. Now that's not our answer. That's just the measure of the angle from here to here. So now we need to add that to the 90. So we would need to add 90 plus this angle. So 90 plus 33.7 is going to give me 123.7. But remember, I almost forgot that this isn't, isn't a positive number, that's a negative number. So that's our answer, negative 123.7 degrees.
So don't forget your degree sign like I just did there. All right, here's your chance to see if you can get it. So go ahead and write this down. And I would like you to try to find the angle from here to here. Pause this video and I will show you the solution um, after you get it. All right, so here's the work that I did to find and measure this angle. So again, I, we were given the coordinate points for two and I wanted to create a right triangle. So notice that one leg of the right triangle was our initial side of the angle. So here's the initial side, 4, 2, so the x coordinate is 4, and we went up to, and if you hear that wrestling in the background, that's just my dog throwing her toy around. But anyway, so this is 4, this is 2. So here's the angle that we want to find, the opposite over the adjacent. So again, tangent, toa, opposite over adjacent. So we have tangent of theta, is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, so 2 over 4. So to solve for theta, we take the inverse of tangent. So the inverse tangent of 1 half, because 2 fourths is really 1 half, and if you put that into your calculator, you get 26.565, and I just rounded it to 26.6, and there's your answer. All right, here's our next vocabulary word, and it's coterminal angles. It says two angles are considered two angles in standard position are considered coterminal angles if they share <laughs> I have hair share the same terminal side now so let's let's draw an angle let's put this one in green make it a little bit thicker boom, ba -da -boom, boom, 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 boom. and both of these have to be in standard form that's not green that's white there we go that's better you can see that and so let's say this angle goes right there Okay, so we're finding that angle. Now, if we have another angle that's in standard position, and we want to make it coterminal with this one, they have to share the same terminal side. So remember that the terminal side, here's the initial side. The initial side has to stay on the x-axis for it to be in standard position. And this is the terminal side, or the terminating side, the other side. So if we have another angle that starts right there, Let's make this one longer. Yay. And it goes all the way around right there. And so it's going to come out to be about there. And again, that's going to be longer. So imagine they're right on top of each other. They share that same terminal side. These would be considered coterminal angles. Okay. All right. So let's see if we have two angles that that we have are if they are coterminal. So let's look at 300 degrees and 60 degrees and let's see if they are coterminal. So if we look at this, 300 degrees is going to start off and that's going to go from the initial side and it's going to go around. So there's 90 degrees to the y-axis. Another one would be 100, another 90, that's 180 degrees. So then there's another 90 degrees, so that's 270, so we'd need 30 more degrees, and so if we're just going to do a rough sketch, 30 degrees would be somewhere right there from there to there. So this is a 300 degree angle for all the way around. We go 90, 180, 270, and then 30 more degrees, that'd be about 30, 300. Okay, so now we're going to do the 60 degree in red. So again, let's start off the initial side. And now we're going to go to 60. Well, if we go straight up, this axis right here, the y-axis, that's a 90 degree angle, so our 60 degree angle is going to be about right there. So is that, are those coterminal angles? Well, again, coterminal angles means that both angles share a terminal side. Well, here's the terminal side for the 60 degree angle, terminal side for the 300 degree angle. They definitely don't share it, so these are not coterminal angles. So let's look at another example. So here's our next example, 300 and now negative 60. So the only thing that's different in this example is that the 60 degrees is now negative 60. So that's, remember, that's going to make it go this way. So 
let's look at this. If we plot our 300 degree angle again, starting at the initial side, we go 90, 180, 270, and then 30 degrees past the negative y axis, and that is going to be somewhere about there. Okay? Now, negative 60. Will that be on the same side? So let's think about this. Starting off here, now, negative 60 is going to go this way. So it looks like it's going to be, but are we sure? Now remember, we said that this green one, 90, 180, 270, so 300 is 30 degrees past this. So this is 30 degrees right here. It's a 30 degree angle right there. And if we go 60, it would be somewhere around there. So let's go ahead and just draw that like it is coterminal. But what is the difference between this red or the terminal side of this angle and the negative y-axis? Well, if this is 60, we know that from here to here is 90. Then this, the rest, 90 minus 60, has to be 30. So these are coterminal because they do share the terminal side. Okay, and that's about all we're going to need to know for this lesson with coterminal angles. Alright, so next up is the unit circle. And we say that the unit circle, well we don't say, we, it does. It has a radius of 1 with its center at the origin of coordinate system. Now, so if we see this circle down below that I've drawn here, notice that all four intersections are at 1. So here x equals 1, here x equals negative 1. Here y is 1, here y is negative 1. Everywhere we go, its radius or distance from the center is 1. So if we were to try to come up with a the degree of the measure of an angle that was in the unit circle we could find the points of intersection so we could use this and let's say that we were given that this is 30 degrees so it's a 30 degree angle I know it doesn't look like it's 30 it looks more like 45 but we'll say it's 30 for right now now so we can find the coordinates of this point where it intersects the circle at and the way that we do that is what we've we've been using some trig functions already and so that the intersection of this coordinate would be an x and y coordinate now the x coordinate is going to be the cosine function so we would say cosine 30 and the y coordinate would be the sine function so that would be sine 30 Okay. Now, if you go ahead and put those into your calculator, you could write that. So cosine of 30 is going to give you about, let's round to the second decimal, so that would be 0.87. And then sine 30 is going to give you 0.5. Okay, so that would be the coordinate of that point where it intersects the unit circle using the cosine and sine. So now the key thing that you're going to need to remember is that the cosine is going to be the x coordinate or the adjacent. Now if we were to create our right triangle we would have something that looked like this. So that does mean that our cosine of 30 that gave us the adjacent side. So remember the cosine, so ka, C-A-H. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, we know the hypotenuse is 1 because that's the radius of the circle. Cosine of 30 is the 0.87, so this side of the triangle is 0.87. And then sine of 30 is so, S-O-H, for sine is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. Again, the hypotenuse is 1, which is the radius of the circle. And it said that the length of that side is 0.5, which was given in our coordinates. All right, so we're going to try to use the unit circle to help us find uh, the 
values for cosine theta and sine theta for a few um, angles. So the first angle we're going to look at is 90 degrees. So if we do cosine of theta when theta is 90, we're going to do cosine of 90 degrees. And then we're also going to do the sine of 90 degrees. Now, let's go ahead and let's draw that angle. So the angles, if I'm going to put it in green, will have a initial side on the x-axis. And its terminal side will be 90 degrees, which is going to be on the y-axis, pointing straight up. Okay, so what we're going to try to do is to figure out the coordinate of where that intersects. Well, notice that the radius is 1. This is the unit circle. And so where is that point of intersection? Well, that is 0, 1. Now, cosine theta and sine theta, they, all, they both said that these are the coordinate systems or coordinate uh, points of the unit circle. And so let's look at this. If cosine of 90, or if cosine is the x, and then sine is the y value, what do you think these are going to equal? Well, what is my x value at that point? Well, it's 0. And the y value is going to be 1. Now, if you were to put that into the calculator, so cosine 90, you would get 0. Sine 90, you should get 1. It's basically that simple. You can do this in the calculator, but it's good to be able to see what it's going to be like on the unit circle as well. Okay, so the other angle that I was going to look at uh, we're not going to do the 180 degree angle, but let's do the, the one that said negative 90 or 270. So either negative 90 degrees or 270 degrees. And let's see if that is going to be the same thing. So theta is going to be one of those. So remember negative degrees, they go in the clockwise motion. So negative 90, if we have this is the initial side right here. Make that a little thicker. And let's go ahead and make it red so we can see that a little better. So here's the initial side, and it's going on the x-axis. Negative 90 is going to go straight down. Right there. So we want to see what that would be. Well, if you're using the unit circle, you can see that negative 90 degrees, it is going to intersect the unit circle at negative or 0, negative 1. Now, let's see if 270 degrees would be the same. So I'm going to use the green for this one. So 270 degrees, that would go 90, 180, 270. And so, by the way, these are coterminal angles, and they intersect the unit circle at the same point. So if we were to do cosine of 90 degrees, what do you think we would get? Well, of course... Since cosine is the x value of the unit circle and the angle. Nope, not x. But that would give us 0. Well then, sine of 90 degrees, that would give us 1. And that's going to do it for today's lesson. I uh, hope you were able to learn a few things about angles and the unit circle. Uh, next lesson, we will dive more deeply into the unit circle and how they are uh, related to the angles of, or the measure of the angles. All right, have a good day. See you guys later.